Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Dice Cult for episode 146 of On the Backs of Gods. My name is Jillian, and we have our players here today. Same as always, we have Kyle, Matt, Katie, Josh, and Greg. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and jump into our recap. Um, you know, what happened last session? I think it was just a shopping session, really. Um, everybody went out after... Um, uh, I wasn't calling it a robbery at first, but now it's officially a robbery as you have broken into uh, Calendula's tonic and tincture and actively taken something from the scene after releasing a large panther into the city at large and uh, causing hundreds and hundreds of gold of damage worth to the shop itself. And um, at least it was causing... only a temporary panther. Yeah. <laughs> Temporary yeah, Panther sure. is the name of my Rush cover band. I'm sure that fixes everything. Uh, mm. <laughs> nonetheless, uh, all of you leave quickly and stealthily and uh, try to go about your business as the party is immediately split, as some people are too cunning and too stealthy to be seen. And Roshan goes off to pay too much gold to book a haircut and like a facial, like just too much gold just to get in. None of this gold will go to the cost of the of the uh, services and goes on his way to then be followed by Fen seeking the same service. And now the cost to get a seat has now increased because Roshan took one of the seats and you guys said, oh, cool. Thanks for the hair mask. We'll go and uh, took some probably clay, like clay mud in a jar and took it home with you for a large sum of gold. And <laughs> so you have that. Um, Keld and Nyx go to Beyond, Beyond and Beyond and acquire a magical spoon that stirs for itself at Roshan's request to Nyx to go buy it for Keld. And then Keld was there at the store when it happened uh, and just immediately had it and was informed that Roshan asked for this to be purchased. Uh, you just accidentally Uber Eats the person that you're going to give food to. And it's like, oh, awesome. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Sweet. It worked really well. <laughs> it worked super well. Um, uh, you all head back to the inn for some safety, some perceived safety to communicate and figure stuff out. You find out that uh, the piece of paper you stole from this ledger to figure out um, your fun cultist friend Bosch to see, um, hey, why he's so sick? Are you sick? What wrong? <laughs> you got a fever? Uh, and uh, in this ledger, his portion was entirely blocked out. And after some crafty, um, crafty, uh, stealthy, sneaky work, you are able to uh, transfer the words onto a new piece of paper and figure out that he's, uh, it sounds very sick with a long list of symptoms. And um, some of them scribbled out before this, uh, this black mark went over and um, stated that the name was unavailable. So you only kind of are going on guesses that you're like, that's probably him. Uh, and that there was a note that said off the book, S-E. And that the physician attending to him was not one of the two doctors um, that seemed to see everybody else in the city, uh, which uh, good luck to them, uh, the, the two doctors in the city, uh, but by Calendula themselves, a, uh, the owner of the, uh, the shoppy. And everyone's like, good job, <laughs> we did it. Um, and uh, after this, you are confronted by uh, a young man who seems to be connected to uh, the flies, uh, the fly on the wall network of uh, spies and information, um, talking to Nix, uh, saying that he is basically the middleman between all of you and Gunhild and Nix and the flies. So he's two birds, one stone, the scenario and talks to Nix about understanding why she didn't uh, pay the 4,000. That's a lot of money to throw down in one go. And um, tried to give himself um, a name that works for a spy. And Nick said, I don't want that. And instead of naming him something that you guys might say in the group, like Jenny, um, his name is now Tag, short for Tag Along. Um, and uh, not wanting to argue, he said, sure, fine. Uh, you inform him about the Calendula situation, 
Um, he reaffirms that Calendula will be at the party. And if you can safely speak to Calendula, you should. But if it is not safe, don't do it. So that's on the table for all of you. He also gives Nyx a kind of off-white handkerchief and says, put this in the window so that it can be visible from the ground floor. If you have information for me. Um, this time he followed you around and saw what you did. But next time he he's not going to follow you around all day. Uh, he's got things to do. And went about their merry way after being probably very politely threatened by Russ. Uh, after some fun hair braiding and uh, Kelb taking time to talk to the three scariest ladies in town, um, Thor, Maggie, and Gressa, and trying to convince them to join them to fight uh, Bosch at some point. And with a uh, not so impressive role, Thor asks for proof. And the best proof you can give is somebody else's, as multiple people's word, honestly, but um, she needs something to work with because she says she can't mess up again and that she's not going to lose this. Jim. As she, <laughs> go around, can you sign this? Uh, people walk past you very quickly. Uh, <laughs> and um, says she doesn't want to lose this and presents the gauntlets that she wears that she says are made from Mjolnir itself. Uh, uh, but is like, hey, listen, we want to help. But we're not going to take that risk until we're positive this particular person sucks. And Thor says she will buy you a drink and everybody reconvenes uh, in the evening at the, um, at the, keep wanting to call it. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, that's the bugle boy. Uh, the hard <laughs> fiddle. There we go. <laughs> Just like bugle, bugle. <laughs> mm, where am I? Um, uh, and during this time, blah, 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 uh, Roshan and Nyx go see Eagle real quick so that Nyx can apologize for spying on him and then outing that she spied on him in front of a general of an army that he's working with. And, uh, <laughs> uh, she presents him with a ring that if you go to zero hit points while wearing, you will just die, uh, and <laughs> gives this to him as a gift. And, um, he steps forward and... Uh, politely asks you to keep his name out of your mouth. And you agree, and you go. <laughs> You're like, thank you for your time. <laughs> and everybody goes back about their business. Uh, we are going to pick back up in the in the inn and um, in the in the hours of the evening. Uh, it is loud, it is ruckus. The ladies have now re-entered the space and the sound amplifies <laughs> by two. Woo! Um, as uh, Thor goes over to the table and um, like smacks her hand on the counter to get you a drink. Um, <laughs> and um, there are drinks to be had and uh, everybody is, mostly everybody is currently in this space. Is there anything people are doing before bed? It is, it is later evening. We're probably pushing <laughs> past eight. It is, um, we're probably in the closer to nine ten territory. Mm. Uh, and just so everybody knows, you have one more evening until the party. So one full day, mm. then a nice little bit of a day, and then you've got a party. Uh, mm. So uh, just so everybody knows where we are in the timeline. What are we doing? Would anyone be interested in catching some live music? <laughs> At this hour, I... I appreciate the invitation, but um, I, I think um, I rather need to take care of something I've, I've been putting off for a, a while. Um, but I appreciate it, and thank you. All right. Yeah. That's fine. Blank stairs all around. I understand. <laughs> I'll, no, I, you... I'll, I'll not make too much noise when I come back in. As everybody yeah. acknowledges that it is almost <laughs> 10 p.m. Um, yeah, it, yeah. I'm not certain how much later Corrine is going to be playing if she is playing tonight. There's no harm in going to check. I just want you to temper your expectations, that's all. I don't want you to be disappointed. Oh, it's fine. I just, 
I kind of need to speak to her. I'm right. supposed to make some plans here, but uh, yeah. I, I'm going to run up there anyhow. Uh, yeah. Roshan might have some money. Um, I had assumed Roshan had already left, but... Um... Roshan is upstairs in his room, so you have to go. <laughs> like, go, hello. Go collect. All right, <laughs> All right Ben's going to run upstairs. Roshan, Roshan, give me money. How much do you need? I don't know. <laughs> what are you gonna do with it? Drink. Buy drugs. Responsibly. I'll drink responsibly. Uh, Roshan will give uh, 10 platinum away because okay. money doesn't have... Uh... Platinum is pushed under the door because I see this conversation <laughs> happening through the door. Just Thank you, 10 platinum. Which a random person like... Oh hell yeah! <laughs> oh yeah, great. This door's on. This door's like a slot machine, right? If I ask the door nicely, like, so I just have money. to knock. <laughs> just knock, we get money. Uh, money, please. Uh, uh, money? Yes. Thank you, Roshan. I'll see you in the morning. Well, when I get back, you'll be awake. I'm bye. Sure. bye. <laughs> Tell her hello from <laughs> us. <laughs> um, runs down the stairs and is on his way into the freezing cold in the pitch darkness of night. Oh, but uh, <laughs> that's not too much of an impediment for Fen as he makes his way to the song and siren, uh, which he will arrive at after 10. Uh, but uh, <laughs> he walks through this almost blizzard of a night and is like, I got oh, places boy. to be and music to hear uh, as uh, he pushes forward. Anything happening um, in the relative safely, relative safely, relative safety mm -hmm. of this bar full of mercenaries? Hmm. I know Keld's probably gonna take the drink he was given and go upstairs to re-gift it to Roshan. <laughs> yeah! The boy's gonna need it. He's doing that uh, hard reading. Roshan, is your door locked? Um... I don't think it is. I think the door is unlocked, um, though he doesn't okay. expect company. Yeah. In this shared room, the door is opened. Uh, I sure hope it is. <laughs> I sure fucking yeah. hope it is. Uh, just walks directly in. <laughs> uh, Roshan just kind of looks up at you. Uh, Uh, is there, do you need something? Um, just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for the spoon. Oh, uh, it wasn't me, it was your sister. Funny, because she said it was. Oh, uh, just the money came from the group stores. Nothing to worry about. Anyway, how's the... Um, I think at that point, Keld gets a little bit of a, a coldness from Roshan, but he says, um, almost done. Uh, do you, do you need something? Really at the moment, a bit off. Uh, I'm, uh, I don't, what do you, what do you mean? Hardly see you now. I know you want to finish. Um, after a few seconds, uh, tense seconds, Roshan sighs and says, I'm just, I'm frustrated. Uh, Keld, you are 
so fucking reckless. You, uh, happy to go into a pool with a shadow that you don't know and, uh, I don't know, almost bleed out into a pool. I don't know what happened in there. And then, and then at the tower, like, there's literally a proverb that don't, don't put your hand into the wolf's mouth. Like, killed. I don't know what you're doing. And then after the battle, your sister laid there on the ground, dead, and you wouldn't move to help her until you, I don't know, you saw red and I don't know if you hyper-focused on the enemy, but killed, your recklessness is going to get somebody killed. And if it's you, I'll reach into your chest and grab your heart and make it beat again, just so I can kill you myself. I don't. I mean, everything I did was for you guys. Yeah, well, you can't just forget about yourself. You can't do everything for other people as much as I've wanted to. Hmm. But you at least you... have to try. Yeah, I get that. But I don't want your blood on my hands. I don't want you dying for me, and I don't think anyone else wants you dying for them. If you... It's more important that you make it out of this than none of them do. To who? To everybody. So not what I would want. No. It does that do? It's better that you make it out of this than Bosch and any of his people. You can't throw yourself into a pit of spikes just because it might wound them. You can't play with fire and expect not to be burnt. You're a hardy person, but... Trust me, I know that. Been burnt plenty. <laughs> Sometimes you have to get burnt. Sometimes what you're reaching for is just through the flame. You just gotta keep... Sometimes you just have to do it. I respect your commitment, but... Just think before you put yourself in front of danger, because you putting yourself in front of danger could put others at risk. Without you, killed your one hell of a sturdy bulwark, but without you, what have we got? Don't worry. Not trying to, not trying to die. Not going anywhere. Good. Sorry um, if I got you that way. Don't mention it. Oh, I'm sorry if I've uh, been a little cold. Thanks for listening, and just, we are not worth more than you. So don't, don't think yourself frivolous. <laughs> Um, perhaps, uh, perhaps tomorrow when I finish this and he slaps the 
the huge tome. Um, uh, we can get you a drink. <laughs> Likewise. Tell us everything you learned from it. <laughs> That'll take 48 hours over the course of six days. Hmm. <laughs> That's just gonna <laughs> nod and <laughs> get towards the door. <laughs> Eat. Oh, cool. <laughs> Good night, Rachel. Love that book learning. Good night, Kel. <laughs> uh, and as the door closes, a mage hand will wander over to the door and as quietly as it can, just lock it. <laughs> <laughs> The door is locked. Okay. Um, Kel, you go. You start to head downstairs and uh, hear a, a bit of a ruckus and a familiar voice at the head of that ruckus. Uh, the rest of you sort of downstairs and like slowly like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. realizing that like an altercation is kind of occurring, being like, oh, this isn't just normal yelling across the room. Uh-oh. Uh, this isn't just normal, casual, uh, you know, drunken banter. Um, Thor is fully engaged with another person, like at this man's table, um, mm. like hands gripping the sides, like vice grip, Shit. and like looking down at this guy who, um, like, kind of an old, sort of just like crusty, but like very solid looking mercenary <laughs> dude um, who, uh, stands up and um so they are now sort of face to face on either side of this round table so they are a solid like um a good lunge away from each other uh it would take a it would take a solid like amount of effort to grab each other uh and then try to wrestle across the table um but you hear thor loudly saying now do you see another thor Anywhere else? Point at him for me. And begins to undo one of the gauntlets. Oh. Uh oh. And is now sort of like holding it aloft in one hand. Oh boy. Hmm. There is no other Thor. And like slams this gauntlet heavy down on the center of the table. Pick it up. And is just staring at this man. Ooh. Pick it up. <clears throat> and she kind of like straightens up. Anyone is welcome to come over here and try to pick this up. If anybody has any fucking doubts about who I am, you could pick this up. And there's not a lot of like, yeah, bitch, you tell him as normal. <laughs> you can see Gressa and Maggie like sitting pretty stoic uh, behind Ooh. Thor. And you're not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> uh, just sitting stoic and watching. Mm -hmm. And Thor has arms out, like, inviting anyone to step forward. And let's see how ballsy this man is. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Yeah, let's find out. Um, I mean, it's not like anybody's calling me the original Nana, really. That's rather stupid. <laughs> and this man stands up. This this man is also intoxicated, um, as is most of the people in the vicinity. And he, like, mm -hmm. rolls up his sleeves, maintaining eye contact. Uh -huh. And um, anybody with a passive insight of uh, 15 or higher... Uh, um, you can tell that as this man resigns to like being like I'm gonna show you and is attempting to pick up the gauntlet her energy almost like she presents it still forward but it laxes like it's like a like a uh, clean of the hands you know sort yeah. of scenario that it's like mm, alright yeah. perfect mm. uh, and you watch this guy go over to like reach forward for this gauntlet that is just sitting on the table. It's not like the table is breaking under the weight and it is rocketing to the core of the earth. Uh, 
but this man grabs hold of the gauntlet, a big smirk on his stupid face. Just like you can see that there's like two teeth missing on the side and just like a good layer of gunk around the top near the gums and just grabs it like right onto the gauntlet. And his arm fully, like, you know, when you just, like, you tense like this, it fully, like, is pulled (laughs) back like this as he tries to lift it. And is, like, and you can see that he he stops and there's hesitation. And then he tries again. (laughs) And again. (laughs) And um, you can hear one of the women snort. Which sort of leads to the cacophony of people now laughing at this man who uh, attempted to lift this gauntlet. And he fully just lets go a bit red in the face, maybe just from drinking, maybe from embarrassment. And um, uh, says, tricks. And um, is going to, uh, he makes his way fully out of the establishment. Uh, No longer worth staying in his opinion. And uh, Thor watches him go. Mm. Anyone else is welcome too if they have a big dick tonight. <laughs> if you're feeling ballsy, if you feel like a big ass balls, you're welcome to come try and pick this up. I most certainly have not. Uh, it seems that nobody in this scenario steps <laughs> forward. No. There is no. there is a lack of interest from the peanut gallery as she kind of of puts her hand back into the gauntlet and like straps Mm -hmm. it back onto the arm and casually Mm -hmm. lifts the hand. Just one. I'm thirsty and um, is going to (laughs) make her way over to the bar. Um, The two other women just full on, just like trying to catch their breath as they laugh and laugh Uh um, at this random man's expense for yeah. um, whatever he said quiet enough to not be heard, mm. but loud enough to hear Thor retaliate. Uh, mm. What are we doing, people, on the home turf? Anything else before I bedtime? Uh, I think Nana will kind of, like, once sort of a lot of the hilarity has died down and, and people have kind of had their chuckle over this dude, um... Nana's going to lean over to Nyx um, and say, um, I, uh, can I ask your advice on something? Yeah, sure. Bill's going to plop down. <laughs> That's uh, probably Russ the Russ is sitting there. Uh, yeah, Russ up. too. I mean, <laughs> literally, <laughs> Nyx's That's spot is his is. knee now. Every That's time. true. Yeah. Table, so. yeah. And you know what? It's fine that Russ is here for this. Nana's following up on Russ' advice anyway. Um, mm. it, okay, so we've got this party coming up in a, in two days. Tomorrow and then the day after that is the party. And um, I, I've been trying to prepare for this and also to sort of grapple with... Um, 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 you know how I, I spoke with Volda briefly, um, what was it, about a week ago now? Um, I think it was actually more. longer than a week. I think it was longer Probably closer to a month. It's, oh, yeah, I think it's been about a month. It's, honestly, it's, it's kind yeah. of weird. Hey, aren't you guys getting married? What? We, that's, that's the plan. Um, that's longer than um, our engagement. I... <laughs> Sorry, my bad. It is. I'll go back. I mean, I'll go back. It's, it's, I know. That's all right. That's all right. No, I understand. It's, uh, We've been married wait. longer than she. It's taken her to talk to him again. Wow. <laughs> I mean, the last time I talked with him, basically what he said was, "We need to talk." And what am I supposed to And you to haven't think followed about up. That? I didn't. I've. But... I've been. I've been worried that if I tried to reach out to him while we were on the road or while we were trying to deal with Ing, that maybe somebody would catch wind and somebody might try to put a target on him. And then we got back to town and there was the whole thing with preparing for the party. And I've been putting it off, okay? I've been putting it off and I don't feel good about it, but I just, I don't, 
I don't know what to say. And there's only 25 words in ascending, and how do you... I mean, like... And I think that's plenty. Yeah. Sorry sure. it took so long. Are you free to talk? Roshan could send more than one message. We have the ring. Well, yeah, he, he's... Let's go he's upstairs. I'm going to start dragging her. I don't, but <laughs> Roshan's doing his reading. He's trying to finish his book. We've Good interrupted luck. his reading plenty of times. He'll be fine. Uh, Russ is waiting to see if everybody gets up from the table. Is everybody going to Roshan's room? Not as being dragged. Sure. <laughs> Keld, are you yeah, coming along? He, yeah, <laughs> Russ is actively watching Keld to see if he's standing, like just like watching him. I think he is. So I'm invested. Yeah, okay. yeah, all right. All right, and then Russ all gets right, up. Yep. Um, all right, all right. Yep, yep. Okay. <laughs> um, you all make your way upstairs uh, to, and like, Roshan, it's it's not a secret. Um, a gaggle of people talking loudly are making their way to like to your door, and it's kind of a moment like Nana is loudly <laughs> protesting your right to keep your privacy while you read your book. I want it noted. I want that and on the, the door record. is knocked upon. It is. It's more ran into, uh, but then it is like more aggressively <laughs> knocked upon. Um, Roshan will uh. He will send a a mage hand to unlock the door, and then um, immediately after it is unlocked, he will cast invisibility on himself. What? Just for the shenanigans. I love it. I love it. So we get into the room. Oh no! I, he must have gone. He must have gone to the bars. Can't talk with Roshan. I'm sorry, guys. A, a page surreptitiously turns in the book. <laughs> hmm. It was over. just here. Uh, it, but Ask I, him I, for the I, message. Okay. I, Roshan, Do you need more I, money? No. No, I still have plenty money. of money, actually. Says oh. the book ghost. Yeah, the book ghost <laughs> says. That gives us he'll, money. He'll reappear in a flourish. Money? Okay. <laughs> And then he's back. All right. <laughs> Shocker. Oh, I, it's not money, Roshan. I, I, I just, I need a sending so I can talk with Valda. Um, it, it, okay. If you've got one to spare, I, I, I hardly want to put you out. Ah, uh, that is no trouble at all. Do you, do you want me to do it? Or do you want me to put it in the ring? Um. I, I think I've left it long enough. I really ought to do it myself. Um, okay. Uh, Roshan holds his hand out for the ring. I don't know who has it. I but... think Nana's still got it because it had the... Uh, ah. um, yep. Is that right? It doesn't matter. Everybody here, yeah, the ring whatever. appears. Yep. The ring is here <laughs> in Roshan's hand. He casts <laughs> uh, sending into it. Thank you. Um, my God. Um, uh, oh, I've. I don't we can know. use the lantern if it. I, I'd really rather make sure that nobody's trying to listen in on this. I'm. I don't want to put Volder in danger if I can avoid it. That's, the last thing I want. Yeah, uh, Roshan's mage hand will. Uh take the lantern around the room and we'll do a search. Do you want a perception? I would love somebody to do a perception check. Uh, 22. Hell yeah. Same from Russ, Sainzies. Uh, nice. <laughs> Russ doesn't know what we're doing, but he does like a spin <laughs> when other people start spinning. Like, I'll look. I'll spin. <laughs> Everyone just starts spinning. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, um, we're just idling. What are we looking for? <laughs> Nothing catches your eye. Okay. Lovely. Okay. I think we're safe. Okay. All right. Okay. <sighs> just got to figure out what the fuck to say. God damn it. Okay. Um, I, Nana is like, I feel like her shoulders are like rebar at the present moment. She's very. He's like, tense. oh no. 
<laughs> Killed with his one hand trying to massage Nana. Like, he's a giver. He's so nice. Okay. Okay, okay. All right. Um, uh, Nana is going to try and filter through the five billion different versions of this 25 word message that she's been rattling around in her brain for the last month and um uh she'll she'll say um boulder sorry for the long delay are you free to talk right now and leave it like that I'm glad you're well. Uh, I have time. Uh, what do you need? Um, hey, I'm assuming she gets an, another sending uh, to use. Looks at Roshan. In the ring. <laughs> okay, Please. he's free. He's free to talk. Um, if I could have another. Um, okay. Another is in. Uh, okay. Um, you said we'd things to discuss. Hope you're well and your team. Um, how are things back home? We are well enough. Conflict between East and West. Um. Blame for corruption, leaving us and coming to them. I'm being very political currently. Okay, okay. Well, that's, I suppose, nothing new. Um, right. Yeah, yeah. The West is getting heat for uh, the corruption moving East. And that makes sense. Um, mm. And Valda's uh, fielding a lot of that politically. Okay. All right. Um, can, can I have one more, please? Oh. Sure. Uh, it's the last one I got for a while. Okay. You, you're sure you can spare it? Uh, it's a short while before I can have more or less. More. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Um, last message for a bit. Glad you're well. Anything I, we can do here to take heat off of the West. Um, we'll be political too shortly. No requests at this time. My condolences for having to be political. It's unpleasant. No assistance currently needed. Be safe. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Well, that was exactly none of the horrible things that i was worried that was going to be about um you look at that well this time <laughs> uh okay all right and if you'd messaged That's him a month news. ago you would have known this whole time that it was fine yeah i suppose mm. but mm -hmm. where would i have had all that fun angsting over it Losing sleep. Uh, on other things, probably. <laughs> yeah, mm. you're not wrong. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Russ is currently um, kind of like squatting on the opposite side of the book as Roshan and is like looking at it. Uh, and Roshan, you're watching this man's face yeah. like go through so many emotions. <laughs> looking at this um, endless Sudoku puzzle that your book is. And um, Ages of grief. kind of like looks at you. And gives you like my condolences pat on the yeah, shoulder yeah. and pushes himself up. Yeah. I think as he's looking, Roshan will um in as simple terms as he can just explain how one thought goes to the next um and point around the page uh, and try. But I think mm. it sounds like utter gibberish. Yeah, <laughs> it's all jargon. And you are still greeted with that same pat yeah. and uh <laughs> used to stand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you, all of you. I, I really appreciate it. I should have done this sooner, but I, I really didn't want to leave it until we got into the middle of all this. I wouldn't have been able to think about anything else while we were at the party, and you all deserve me to be present. Glad you're you think... able to. You weren't thinking of chickening out, were you? Out of talking to him or out of the party? Neither one. Out of the party? Okay. No, no. <laughs> no, she's no. been avoiding talking to him for a month. <laughs> and I've just spent an awful lot of money on this party, so... <laughs> uh, that wasn't yeah. going to go away. Uh, we can't no, I... uh, sunk cost. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> no, the party's important. There's things to be done, there's information to find, and maybe some connections to look into but at the very least Volda doesn't have any requests uh, pertaining to the political opinions of folk about um, about the West regarding the corruption um, suppose if nothing else we can keep an ear to the ground but it's at least something that we know to expect to hear around the party let's make sure Fen's aware um, when he gets back in uh, from seeing Kareem, just so that it doesn't catch him off guard any more than it does us. I have a feeling, and it's just a feeling, but I feel like the people at this party are more interested in using this new catastrophe than they are put off by that it's happening. These are the kind of people who manipulate and have guards, and these creatures will never touch them, and they'll never have to worry about them because they're powerful enough. Yeah. At least for the powerful ones, not the, perhaps not the pretty ones. The pretty and interesting ones, I think, probably have a fair bit more sympathy for the folk on the ground, but I think you're right. The, uh, the rich, the powerful, the influential, the, uh, the connected. Uh, I suppose are going to be the folk who uh, won't mind as much that all this is happening. Um, I suppose if nothing else, so long as we avoid that as a topic of conversation, it probably won't come up. I have to imagine. And truly, we are trying to fix it. Uh, the goal. Right. What did you, you were supposed to figure out a thing and then ask me and then I'd be like, I'll ask my boss. Ooh, you know, did you figure out a thing? Oh, um, yeah, we were, uh, going to ask for, uh, your help. Well, your boss for your help, uh, mm. in killing Bosch, the guard. And, um, Beyond that, uh, perhaps uh, information about uh, a few characters here in the East, along with um, along with perhaps uh, dealing with a couple of those characters as well. I'm going to be fully honest. You probably are only going to get one, but if the first one's a no, then we can start moving down the line. Um, I'm in. I mean, it's 
it is my call to an extent, but um, so like if boss wanted me boots on the ground, I could say no. But um, I could also decide how many come with me. Um, if I think it's something that my full team should be there for, if it uh, suits their abilities, uh, but I will certainly ask. Um, be grateful to have you. Does your, I hate to get myself in debt asking, mm. but, um, does your boss deal in information? Are they someone that we could, I don't know, get a reasonable price on finding things out? Because uh, the flies on the wall, not reasonable for pricing. Not mm. great. I don't think my boss is transactional in that way. Fair. Okay. Then perhaps if you've the time at the party uh, or the inkling, you could point out someone who may be. We're kind of dead in the water for leads right now. I personally hate that request. Mm. Then do not honor it. And he gives you like a low <laughs> bow. <laughs> Unless I see someone really cool, and then I'll point them out, and then you can decide yeah. if you want to go talk to them. But mm. I, the thing is, I've been at so many of these parties, but, and the thing is, if you just stand there and watch, which I do occasionally, you can see how much is, how much work is getting done at this event, how people make their way around to different people, which people are important, and sometimes that stands out. Uh, but also, I try to know only enough to get by. So, I will give enough to get by. That's smart of you. Thank you. Mm. That seems fair. Nick, will you kiss me on the mouth? I was going to ask them to kiss me on the mouth, and I know they won't. And just... <laughs> sure, right away. You yeah. and... uh, uh, <laughs> This is for everyone, and I uh, yes, yes. <laughs> because none of and you guys team. ever will. It's, I'll take a hug. and I'm I'm working on it as he's talking. He like his arm is already around you. I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> we're throwing things at Fen now. That that's what we're doing for Fen. That's been really fun. He did just like kind of like give me like a really hard flick in the nuts, which seems like these are disproportionate <laughs> to each other. Um, <laughs> In my humble opinion, um, He's, uh, I don't escalating think he gets the situation. What you're doing. I don't think he understands what you're doing. Is That's the thing. weird it's because it. he's been like slapping my ass with stuff and like trying to wrestle with me. So I felt like it yeah. was in the same like field. And now he's like punching me in the dick. So like I really, uh, I'll, tr I'll try to like find a good level. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. you should keep escalating. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. All right. You know, Fen is just going to escalate right back, Roshan. Why do you do this? He's we'll not see gonna what win. happens. <laughs> <laughs> because oh, don't I like tell popcorn. Fen that he will commit too hard. Listen, if he wants to fight at this party, that's about as high as we can get. So I'm available. Okay. All right. I'll even <laughs> let only, him use the bigger circle. Only if that fighting turns into kissing with my, with tongue. <laughs> <laughs> See, the thing is, you could do that. You could be like, I challenge you to a duel. The winner gets to be kissed on the mouth with tongue. So that is mm. something I've never seen that happen at this party, but it's not incorrect. What so I've heard... What about a duel in which the weapon is tongues? I mean, if I was a spellcaster, which I am, and I had a tongue in my mouth that is not mine, I would find it extremely difficult to cast spells. You should use that against the next spellcaster you meet in the ring. If all my other stuff doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> if all else fails. Another arrow in your quiver. I will say, though, if you're like, I challenge you to, to a duel with just tongues, I feel like you could just go make out somewhere. Because uh, <laughs> that's also not weird at this party. Huh. 
Interesting. I suppose they told you this shit's weird. The art's weird. Yeah. yeah. The people art. They're like it's like literal people and they are art. Huh. Okay. All right. Mm. Definitely nothing like I've ever seen before, but I suppose we're as prepared as we're going to be. Um, hopefully. Seems so. Well, I don't know. You you're gonna be fighting people, Nana, and I don't know if you're actually prepared for that. <laughs> I mean, I, I at least that. know I'm I'm comfortable with fighting. I'm comfortable with sparring. I'm comfortable with dueling. I can do that. Politics. Nana, who are you worried about fighting? Well, I I'm more concerned about fighting with um, somebody else who might be able to just blind me for the entirety of the combat and I just have to flail wildly and hope Oh, so this is just a hypothetical thing. But I mean, Ma said... managed it in no time at all, but it didn't sound like Ma Cher was going to be seconding for anybody. Yeah, but you said that the person you're working for, they made someone really mad? So... She didn't say who! I don't, she she just said that she'd been, uh, it was uh, full disclosure. Didn't give you any uh, details. <laughs> uh, Max Smoothbrain, uh, there were few details given. It was something like it was something to do with the business. Uh, 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 no, side she of said things. she might have pissed somebody off. I think is... that was it. That was all she. Yeah, no, no. All it was was literally she thought she may have pissed someone off enough that they may try to fight her at the party. And that was why she was looking for a second. And I needed a ticket in, so that was a good enough excuse, I suppose. Might be a good idea to see if more information on this person. That way you know what you're out for. She's been hard to contact. I mean, like, I... I've you have a whole day tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can give it a try. Oh. I think Roshan in uh, at his desk kind of just yawns loudly. Oh, well, it's about that time. About he time says, to as the only one who doesn't go to sleep. Some more. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. I'm gonna sit so down right across from him. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> My plan, it failed. Yeah. Curses. <laughs> oh, it reminds you of when we were kids, doesn't it? Yeah, unfortunately. Mm. I've been too lenient on you. You've gotten used to being respected in your requests. I liked that. Mm. You'll have to get there with Nyx next. <laughs> I think he'll uh, give her a stare and scrunch his eyes up. Mm. <laughs> He's him on the mouth. He's him on the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, stop bothering him. <laughs> Angel and Devil on your shoulder. Angel and Devil. <laughs> on opposite oh, sides no. of you. Kiss him on the mouth. Leave him alone. <laughs> Kiss him on the mouth. Leave him alone. Just there. <laughs> Uh, Roshan will summon a mage hand, give it a, a kiss on the finger, and it will float <laughs> over to you and bop that right on your nose. That's cute. You see? He likes me more than all of you. I suppose that was only inevitable. Once you start traveling with someone long enough, all familiar attachment gone out the window. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go downstairs and find something to drink before I go to bed. I don't. You should know. try the juice, the new one. Oh, the new one? I thought you'd the said new... okay. The other one you'd said was bad. No, don't touch this that one. This is different. One. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is better. It's drinkable. Yeah, it's good. It's mine oh, good. specifically, but you're allowed to have it. Oh well, thank you. I'll give it a try. Why not? Thank you. That's for everybody. Aww. You are very for giving, Nyx. Thank free you. Free reign on the juice. Uh... <laughs> if you know it exists. Mmm. <laughs> well, I suppose Nana will have to go and get herself some juice then. Alright. 
who's leaving the room? <laughs> Eld will head to the door. <laughs> <laughs> you should go with them. I'm gonna make Roshan do me a favor. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> have have fun with your terrible book. And he gives you a little kiss on the temple and uh, he follows and he goes like full speed. Like there is a quickness to the feet as he makes his way to the door Woo! and fully gets under Keld and like pulls him up onto his shoulder. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Keld, your lower half is like almost touching the ground. Like you are, you are Amazing. not brought up <laughs> incredibly tall. Uh, but then That's Russ uh, waddles out of the space <laughs> holding you and you can hear, Oh, the stairs are going to be complicated. Here we go. Oh, God. Hold on. I could take his feet. <laughs> I no, could no, slide no. down. <laughs> Ooh, um, he's gonna he's gonna roll for this before you. Oh uh, boy. He's gonna roll and see I if he can carry. Can I offer him the help action? <laughs> he will allow no help. All right then, go he at it. No bud. Help. Um, he doesn't have a lot of things that help in the strength department, but that, that mm. I mean he's not strong. But... Mm. Oh no. It's either a nat one or a nat twenty. I don't know which. Okay, <laughs> perfect. You love to see it. Um, this man can do no wrong, as um, he takes the first step confidently, and then both of you are tumbling down the stairs immediately. Yes! It is just, nat one, baby. His knee just sort of buckles, and you both go oh, God! down the stairs, just full speed. Um, uh, both of you oh, no. are gonna take. A solid um, four <laughs> points of bludgeoning damage Jeez. as yeah. two just fully just like over very like very solid large men just like in a narrow corridor oh <laughs> they're just like bumping into each other and just rolling <laughs> down um, until you both land and he's like we did it I did it you land at Thor and then she looks down at you. <laughs> um, <laughs> There's just like a, a gentle shake of the head as she uh, kind of steps around and goes about her business. Uh, meanwhile, Roshan, <laughs> again cornered. Uh -huh. Like the, Once more. the mafia don he is in this equation. <laughs> yeah, basically. We're all just kissing his ring. And that I refuse. Never. Uh, I'd rather never. die. You got uh. to kill me. <laughs> Should so she pulls that rope that she's been working on, on out of her bag. I need your help with this rope thing for Russ. Um, I've never tried praying to a god before, and I don't know how that works, but it seems like you guys have talked to a lot of them. And I thought maybe you could help me try to get this blessed. Because you claim you've met Aww. so many of them. So you <laughs> must have this special connection. Hmm. Yeah. Um, no. But also, to. sure, we can try. Great. Um, who? Um, her name it's like Neuron, Neuron. I don't know how it's pronounced. I've never met her. Okay. I don't um, know. Her. Well then, uh what is her domain? Uh, dreams. It's to help okay. get rid of nightmares. Um, what I find helps is to, uh, set an ambiance that gets you in the right mood. If we're talking to a, I mean, if she is a goddess of dreams, then, uh, probably some quiet and, uh, it's not going to be super quiet here, but candlelight, darkness, sleepy vibes. Uh, and Roshan will uh, change the room um, and uh, perhaps strum a, a sleepy melody on his, on the lyre and um, he will instruct Nyx if she is a goddess of dreams Likely the closest place you will be able to talk to her is uh, in your dreams. So let yourself drift to sleep and uh, reach out 
your thoughts to her. So I just had to take a nap. I can do yeah. that. I can do that. Probably holding the rope, right? So that. Uh, yes. Yeah. For sure. Okay. This isn't my room. Whose bed should I take? You, up yours. Uh, you don't use it anyway. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and Roshan will do some guided meditation of let your body relax, let your head relax, your neck, mm -hmm. and and breaths, uh, et probably before the toes, Nyx is snoring. Uh, yeah, probably. Real fast, She's fast, probably. Very bored. <laughs> very bored. Um, Nyx, you fall asleep. Is there anything else from Team In? Mm. <laughs> um, How's that juice though? <laughs> it's okay. It's it's like a tart berry juice, but it's it doesn't have any weird aftertastes, and it's just like a very tart uh, berry juice of some sort. That's pleasant. It's not bad. <laughs> mm. uh, um, you see Russ looking at his finger. Also, that's just like the wrong way, and he's like, oh, uh, <laughs> do, you, do you want that? Can we? Should we? We should probably. We should. I mean, are you? <laughs> can, is that advisable? It, have you done uh, it before? Have ha, Have you done it before? <laughs> I mean, um, he fully snaps it the other way. Ah. Uh, <sighs> that looked very painful. He holds it up to Keld's face. <laughs> <laughs> you should kiss it better. <laughs> Give it a kiss. I mean, does he have cure wounds or something? I was kind of hoping for some, like, you know, paladin <laughs> stuff also, even though yeah, I adore and hands. love the kisses. Because this is still your fault. <laughs> <laughs> we all, this is 100% Kel's fault. fault. <laughs> uh, Who needs lay on that? hands when you have lay cure on wounds that a little? <laughs> it is, a there's like a, a little crunch. <laughs> as uh, whatever you use um, uh, will snap options. it back into place, just like it goes, there's like a little wobble and then just a quick snap as it pulls itself back into place. A little lay on hands. <laughs> I feel so much better, thank you. Um, uh, I hope you are not hurt and um, we'll give you a little kiss on the forehead um, and Aww. does no more than that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he doesn't have lay on hands, it's okay. Uh, um. Uh, how long is Nyx going to be asleep in Roshan's room? I mean, that's <laughs> a night. valid question, Nyx. Are you out for the night? It's after ten. I mean, she fell she... asleep <laughs> at Roshan's <laughs> recommendation. Like, she's trying to reach the dream goddess. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't know. Okay. Wake up. <laughs> uh. I think Roshan will uh, send a message and say that Nyx has fallen asleep. Should I leave her or do you want to come get her? If she's tired, she should probably sleep. Uh, all right. Good night then. Um, and then I think at some point while she is sleeping, Roshan would cast silence and have an awkward, uh, <laughs> not lonely conversation with the shadow. Mm. How do you reach out to the shadow as um, that sort of odd ringing in your ears that takes the place of um, natural sound begins to take over? Um, mm. As, yeah, he, he will cast his silence and kind of for the first couple minutes of it, um, get used to the, um, it's not the sound of the shadow, but the feeling of the shadow again. And when he feels like he could pinpoint a location, um, he will look in that direction and um, even if, the shadow isn't there, I think he would ask, is anything different now? 
there is a long pause, almost like a hum in your mind. And the shadow begins to manifest visually. It's almost like looking at a, um, a strange moving image, like you had taken a book and on the corners you had drawn a ball bouncing and you begin to like flip through the pages rapidly, sort of this constant fluid but unnatural motion as the shadow seems to come into itself and you watch as it begins to make its way over to the window and looks out and then acknowledges your question. Things are different. I feel different. I feel better. I feel better. Um, can Roshan insight that? Is that is that in any way ominous or? Oh, sure. Go ahead. Oh, that is a nat one, which is still a twelve. Uh, you are left to your own devices on the intent of the shadow for that. All right. Seems ominous to Josh. Seems a little ominous to Rashan. And you watch the shadow lean forward, this, this heat mirage. Flipping through the pages of reality as it moves. Just this shuffling of its form. Where I was, I lost track of time when I'm talking to them. It's different you, there. You've talked with them since? Yes and no. It is hard to explain. I do not want to keep information from you, but it is if I am talking to everyone and no one. Conversations that spanned days and weeks, years, and no words. It is hard to discern what I have learned and what I have not. But there is a cloudiness that has been lifted. An anger and a fear now that Fenrir is gone. I feel... I feel as if I can think. It has been a long time since I've felt myself. With Fenrir gone, will we, will we have to do that again? The other memories, the ideas, the shades in my shadow. They would not admit they are afraid, but they are. I feel them commit to cooperation. And I don't know if that is something I can trust or not, but it is what they feel. Unfortunately, trust under duress is not trust. Not at least in the long term, but um, do you, is there anything I should know? Is there anything different? Do you need something? Do you have a name? I'm sorry, I'm a bit disorientated from wherever I was. I feel as if waking from a dream. The information they tell me in the moment clear and then gone the next. They crave life. And they may hear me say, 
that I'm willing to manipulate that for everyone's benefit. If they wish to help, then we should allow them to help. But we should remain weary. I... just want to know that at least for now uh, my friends are safe. I I couldn't carry the burden if something that I am clinging to is their undoing. And I do not wish to be your undoing. I fight for you. I fight for something, a concept that I cannot even begin to perceive, but I know it is good. We need to help. I don't want to hurt anyone. With this urge to help, is there anything I should do? Guide you toward anything like I did toward the east? Do you feel anything new? There have been moments where I am brought out of this sleep by your feelings, or the world around me. And I have been. I am proud of you. For the work you are putting in. And I know it is hard. As I can feel the weight on you. And I wish to not be any more of that weight. Sometimes I am brought from that space and I feel pulls towards something as I had before. But they are gone so quickly and then I am lost back to sleep. We will find. We will find what we need. I believe that. If you're struck by, again, one of these awakenings, and there is a thought you need to remember, please reach out. I'm not, I'd like to understand. And even more, I'd like to I'd like to help. It is a surge of energy in this space, almost like static electricity. That feeling in your chest, that content that you feel sometimes when you have done something good, it radiates through your body. And you watch one of the eyes of the shadow flash brightly, a gold like its tears that you had seen before. We are going to help. Thank you. And it slowly fades back. Um, I think uh, Roshan, despite the, the flush of um, just not euphoria, but a uh, good feeling um, mm -hmm. is not tainted, but flavored by uh, mm -hmm. a little bit of uh, fear or because uh, Sh Shadow's still being ominous and mm -hmm. he doesn't know uh, what he can, what's going to happen. But um, uh, after a few 
seconds, he'll look into the shadow's eyes and kind of nod and eventually let the silence fade and transition back into reading all night. Okay. As sound begins to permeate the space again, Nyx, what a beautiful sleep you are having. So quiet, so so calm in this loud, terrible space. That's great. Um, uh, juice is had and some people trek through the night. And uh, that is where we are going to take our break. Uh, thank you all for being here. We really appreciate it. Go get a snack and a drink. And we will see you guys in 10 minutes. Thank you, Tim.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Dice Cult for episode 146 of On the Backs of Gods. We just took our 10 minute break. Uh, the party spent time uh, having some drinks and some conversations and mostly just kicking open Roshan's door to ask for things or, uh, uh, you know, have emotional conversations or once again, ask for things, uh, mostly ask for things. Uh, but uh, the night continues to pass and uh, Fen on his lonesome makes his way to the Song and Siren, uh, uh, pushing through, um, it's, it's, it's not a blizzard. But, like, it is definitely the whipping of cold wind, and you have to pull up your scarf as you move through. And eventually you can see the lights of the song in Siren. Yeah, I think Fen planned on taking the bicycle and then figured that was a bad idea. <laughs> Goes to grab the bike, looks out the window. No. <laughs> uh, but uh, you make your way towards the door. What's your passive perception? Uh considerable i was like i'm pretty sure it's something it, stupid uh something it's, astronomical it's 20. ah a solid uh, 10 more than keld's passive i believe uh <laughs> so you guys got both ends of the spectrum uh but you approach there is no sound of music nor is there sound of like like that kind of that that ambiance uh, that comely comes with a um, a tavern or an inn or a space where people are just drinking, where there's a hum of conversation, you're not hearing that. All right, are there are there lights on inside? All, light, all the lights are on. Yeah, all the lights are still on. You can see through the window. Um, the front desk uh, with a a woman with a precise bob standing at it. Uh, Fen will just walk in. Hello, uh, night. Oh, hello. May I? And as she goes to talk, you watch somebody um, step out from, like, around the opening from where the um, uh, the tavern is. Uh, it is a heavily armored man who um, just sort of steps into the space and just seems to be watching. And the woman continues to focus fully on you and smiles. Uh, are you returning to one of your rooms? Or I'm sorry to say that the um, the bar is closed tonight. Oh, um, I was hoping Corinne would be playing. Um, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. She should be back tomorrow, though. Uh, what time will she be back? Um, let me look real quick for you. I'll see if she is scheduled for afternoon or evening and uh, proceeds to start to look through things. The man just stands there quietly, does not seem to aggress or do anything. Just stands there. Heavily armored, is he wearing any clothing that calls him out as belonging to any sort of faction that would recognize? Does he have a coat of arms or anything like uh, that? Go ahead and roll history. Cool. 15 on the die, which would be uh, 16 overall. Okay. There is a confidence looking at this armor. And once again, you're not super worldly. It's not like you've been all the way to the east and have seen what, what they have to show and what their armor um, uh, pertains to. But the make of it seems strange to you. It has uh, like very sharp ends to the elbows. And the helmet held to the side also has like a sharp and almost like tusk-like shift to it. Um, none of it rings a bell to you. And this is a human man? It appears so. All right. And how is he armed? Uh, it looks like he has a long sword. Okay. Uh, flipping through the pages. Um, okay, it looks like we have, I think she may be in, in the afternoon. Um, they put a question mark next to it, but, um, the fact that it's in my book, I feel at least vaguely confident. Right. Uh, would it be possible for me to leave a note with you for her? Of course. Uh, go redhead, do you need some paper? 
Uh, I, if you have some stationery, I've, I've got some in my bag, but it's probably a bit crumpled. Um, um, she provides some parchment and um, ink well and quill. Uh, and Fen's just going to write a little note. Uh, stopped in to see you. Uh, stopped once before when you said you'd be here and you weren't. I, uh, but I was hoping to see you and discuss plans. I have some shopping to do tomorrow in Merriment Square. We'll try to stop in again. They said you may be in in the afternoon, but we need to make arrangements for the party. Uh, look forward to seeing you in this sign fan. Uh, the woman uh, smiles at you um, with just a stoic stranger vibing in the corner um, and takes the parchment. I'll make sure she sees this as soon as she arrives. Thank you. I appreciate it. And mm. then we'll give a gold as a tip. Appreciate it and takes that gold. Um, as you make your way out, um, you do hear like some shifting of chair and um, soft conversation. Somebody's in the tavern, but it is not a, it is not a loud conversation. It is something held quiet and seems to have been held while you were standing there as you didn't really hear much as you stood waiting and making your letter. But people are in there. All right, and Fen will uh, thank the um, matron again and turn to the big imposing stranger and just give a you know, the traditional mm -hmm. Briar, Briar Heart genuflection uh, and make his way out the door. Are there any exterior windows that look in on the uh, on the bar um, area? They do not. It only looks into the lobby and then the rooms. Okay. Uh, uh, go ahead. Give me just funsies real quick. Why not? Give me intelligence. Just, just a little intelligence. Oh, it's not coming through. I can't hear you. Oh, uh, same 15 on the die for the same 16 as the history Okay. Check. Um, as you uh, turn and um, formally acknowledge this figure, who does in turn give a, a bit of a low nod, um, it's as if, kind of like when a person's wearing contacts, uh, that's how it looks visually, like almost the contact stays up as the eye sort of shifts down to look briefly at the ground. There is just a disjointed moment between the images there. There's just a disconnect for half a second in this man's eye. And then he um, straightens back up and um, is standing there waiting until you leave. All right. And Ben will walk out the front door. And uh, this, uh, the song and siren is kind of right off of Merriman Square, right? Yeah, it's pretty close to Merriman Square. All right. Before he heads back to the to the uh, hard fiddle. He's going to look around. He knows nothing's open at this hour, but he wants to find like a shop that looks like it might be like an herbalist shop or something, just so he knows where it is to. Oh, you know where the herbalist shop is. Uh... Well, not, not like that. <laughs> not, not the, uh, not a apothecary, but like somebody that would sell like raw uh, plants and stuff like that or dried plants. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know where you can acquire a a wide variety of dried and powdered uh, preserved plants. Okay. But you Excellent. double check to see if there's somewhere else because you're like, okay. <laughs> um, oddly enough, at least nothing stands out in Merriment Square. Okay. Uh, and is there anybody that looks like a, like an outdoors outfitter, uh, or would that probably not be in the fancy section of town? Uh, you mean like like snow boots and things like that? Is that what you're yeah, asking yeah, about? Like, yeah, like yeah, generally. I mean, there are a lot of clothing stores, but um, if you're looking for more supply type things, 
yeah, probably like, outside of Merriman Square. Who would sell rope and pickaxes and shit like that? Like, yeah, probably not yeah, in not... Merriman Square. All right. All right. Is that an area that I'd pass through on the way back to the hard fiddle? Um, it's something you could probably oof. you could probably find if you have people to ask about it. Okay. I'll just make my way back towards the hard fiddle then. Okay. Uh, with with okay. an eye out for that sort of thing. Yeah, keep an eye out. Um let's see. No. Okay. Uh you make your way back and um eventually are greeted with the warm interior of um the hard fiddle um before you came back uh russ to the group said all right i'm heading up i might be in your room i don't know whose room i'm about to be in um and he goes upstairs and goes uh <laughs> and lightly knocks on the room that rashawn and nix were in um for i'm assuming a mage hand to come unlock the door and uh Russ uh, climbs into the bed next to Nyx and is going to sleep there. Um, uh, but currently, uh, three people still remain. Is there anything before you guys go to bed? Anything else before night takes you? I think the only thing that um, Nana would... Um maybe want to talk with um well she'd want to make sure that fen was made aware of uh the dealio with um the uh west taking some flack from the east for corruption coming over not surprising yeah. but it being a political thing it may come up during the party don't get blindsided um all right it's pretty much it yeah making sure that everything's kosher and asking if Kelt wants any additional help with stuff uh, leading up to the party, anything that needs fixing up with his gear or helping him with adjusting his uh, outfit or what have you. I can help us. I can help you with that. It's no trouble. There was a, a guard back in Galanda who had uh, lost his arm um, some time back with... Um, uh, what was it? It was either a bear or it was a wolverine. I'm not sure which. But um, either way, it, nasty business. But he he needed some help from time to time getting his uh, sleeve pinned up. So I, I can make that look quite nice for you. All right. Okay. Off to beds. I believe off to beds. I believe you guys, and I could be wrong about this, um, but I think you're split into two rooms. I think and I was right. That's if I'm what I'm going right. with. So, so right. there I is will the... I support that as tentative canon. So there is currently the Roshan, Nyx, mm -hmm. and Russ room. Mm -hmm. Which means there's a solid one more bed in that room. Who Who is that room? Uh... Sure. This is that just a casual like... question. <laughs> I'm just trying to. Like I'm just trying shirt. to feel beds here. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. What's wrong with that bed, Jillian? Tell me what's wrong with the third bed. Can I can I incite this bed? Incite, I'm just the, bed. incite the bed. Uh, may I fluff the pillow? Uh, I'd like to sleight of hand any evil intent out of this bed. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, no evil beds in this town tonight. <laughs> this bed's not real. So. <laughs> you fall under the floor. <laughs> the bed is just hey. a figment of the fear beer. Illusion. Oh no. Uh, okay. So, um, Nana and Fen, you guys go to your room. Everyone, mm -hmm. um, uh, one room with uh, an extra person this night. Actually, a two extra because this is probably the first time Nix has actually stayed in this room as well. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think so. There were so many beds to just throw stuff on, and mm -hmm. now it's like, well, now my stuff has to sit on the floor. Um, mm -hmm. Um, all of you get comfortable either to sleep, continue to sleep, or uh, meditate. Um, uh, real quick for me, Fen, go ahead and roll two d20s. Okay. Nine. There's a three and a five. All right. Fen, you get comfortable and begin to meditate. 
and there's like there's a discomfort and you continue to try to meditate and it is a feeling of anxiety that just sort of permeates your being as now you are left alone just with your thoughts that try to in your mind slowly be like recap the day put it together put it into spaces make it make sense as you meditate and you cannot get your mind to focus in this way and it is just a a night of restlessness as you try your damnedest to meditate you're going to take a level of exhaustion in the morning as you are Sweet. unable to fully meditate uh the moon not very visually present in the sky at this moment um and you can imagine that the tower if it were not made visible might still be a bit visible to this day but uh, you had taken its battery as the sky is dark and eventually quiet comes over the over the inn as people either pass out at tables or make their way to their rooms or back home what are the passive perceptions of everybody in uh, the room with Roshan? 19. Ooh. Mm. 11. Ah. Ooh, <laughs> I thought it was a 10. Look at you. Oh, wow. Ooh. So fancy. Call it 11. Um. Feel for a second, I was like, who am I waiting on? Me. Yeah. I'm the person I'm waiting on. <laughs> yeah, um, pretty much. Because Nana and Finn one. are off in the other room. You guys are vibing. Nana, fully asleep. Nana's out. <laughs> and I was like, awesome. Um, passive perception. Finally talk okay. to Balder. She can actually sleep through the night, maybe. <laughs> Finally. Finally, I am free. <laughs> for now. For um. now. Until the next crisis. Um. So basically, Nyx. Uh, <laughs> oh, me. Uh, one tea. First, she went to bed sleep. early, guys. You know. Yeah, she got. She's getting a full night's rest before anybody even gets there. Uh, early to bed, early to rise, man. Nyx, you are sort of pulled from your um, induced slumber uh, by sounds that, like. At first, you know, your brain starts to just kind of try to push them into your dreams, like, ah, this is normal. But it's sounds of distress that sort of push through, and eventually you're able to kind of take hold and realize this is, uh, this is a separate thing as you kind of try to wake yourself up as you begin to regain consciousness. And um, it is like sleeping next to a like like you are sleeping next to the campfire it is just he russ feels like he is just incredibly warm almost feverish and is making these distressed sounds and as you kind of turn your head and try to focus in on the situation he gets up and sort of walks um a bit haphazardly, like you watch his leg like bump into the side of the bed as he sort of scrambles a bit forward and begins walking through the room. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's gotta get up and try to at least like grab onto his arm. Are you sleepwalking right now? <laughs> One second. Is he? you uh grab onto his arm as he has made his way almost to the window and kind of grab onto him and you feel his body tense in such a way as if you had like dug your nails into the skin and pulled at it and there is a a shocked gasp of pain and you watch his hand twist into a fist and like it's all split second twist pull back into a fist and almost as if like choking on air that like, like kind of eyes flutter and open hey there 
<laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna lead him to the other room because other people are sleeping in here slash reading a book. <laughs> I'll in the book God. over his face. <laughs> mm. This is normal, Rosha. It's none of my business. Um, he allows you to lead him to the room and he is damp with sweat. Why can you shape water? She'll start just making some ice to like hold on him and cool him off. Are you okay? Um I've I'm I'm sorry about that. I usually don't it, it it's been a while since I've gotten up and Are you okay? I didn't. No, I'm fine. Okay. Is, is it the same nightmares as the other times? The nightmares are usually pretty similar. Uh, uh, Sorry about that. I didn't mean to startle you and wake you up. I actually think I was just getting ready to wake up. I've been asleep for a long time, looking at the window to see how the time. You're like, I could get a couple more hours, but yeah. you're like, oh, I could take a couple more, but I got a lot of sleep, but I'm fine. Okay. He's going to roll. Mm. Maybe I am dependent on alcohol, you know? Usually I have like a little nip before bed or something. That's a shame. I don't know. I don't know if that's it, but we'll see. I also haven't, I haven't been meditating like I should. We could do the solar panel thing that you told me about. You want to you want to learn about the the solar panel? Well, if you need to meditate, I could at least sit with you and do it. I already did once. Sure. Uh, all right. Um, and he he sits down on the ground and then like. Pats the floor in front of him. She'll sit there. And he takes a deep breath. All right. So you know this because you have magic, but everyone has energy inside of them. And this is a different type of energy. Anyone, everyone has this. Everyone can utilize this. It just, it's a muscle that needs to be trained. All right. And he begins to talk you through breathing exercises and um, to, to pull in air to your center and starting to be aware of this muscle in this space, the place where all energy comes to congregate and something that you can pull from when need be. And he talks about it. He, it's almost like a person who you know isn't like very like big on book learning is definitely more of a street knowledge kind of person begins to like quote a book at you that is kind of how he is speaking about this with like a strange very precise knowledge that seems kind of different from uh how he normally is about topics and uh spends time meditating and breathing and talking to you about uh life's energy that flows through all of us and eventually the morning comes uh, everybody gets to take a long rest except for fen and um it is the next day what are we doing i get to mark the day off how fun <laughs> dun, dun, dun. one more 
What's up? Well, I assume when we congregate, it seems a little obvious that Ben's a bit worse for wear. Uh, I think Nana will kind of check in with him. Um, uh, is it? Is it obvious, Ben? Or are you I trying to be um, trying to brush composed? It off? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, I, if anybody looked closely, maybe he looks worse for, for wear, but he's not like bitching about it or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, uh, Nana, you're welcome to roll insight, but it's not like the most apparent thing in the world. Nifty. It's uh, ha, 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 ha. 15 on the dice plus six, 21. Fen, I don't think you can roll higher that on, than that on deception, can you? I, he's not trying to deceive anyone. He's just. No, I'm just saying this is what it would be against. Like, against oh, you yeah, just no, no. being composed. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, Fen, Fen looks tired. Fen, you don't quite seem yourself. How was your meditation last night? I uh, pretty much non existent. Um No. Just uh real uneasy. Just Yeah, just it just couldn't couldn't get the rest, couldn't couldn't get in the mood. It hasn't been this bad since <sighs> shit, since we left Galanda to come to the east. Um mm. nah, I don't know. Um wasn't able to accomplish anything last night. Corrine wasn't and, there. Yeah, um, you'd mentioned that you weren't able to get in touch with her. You'd left a note, right? Yes. Yeah, so they, it seems like they had rented out the bar room to some sort of meeting or something. There's a mm. strange man outside the door that seemed to be keeping watch. Didn't mm. recognize the markings on his surcoat or anything like that. But I, I don't, I don't know. I get the. You've ever seen when I do the disguise self and you can kind of, it, when it's not, when I'm not doing it well and you can kind of see through it, little like blurs and stuff like that. It just, if you look closely, it's not right. Mm. There's something about that guy that was kind of gave off that sort of, that sort of vibe. It's just something wasn't right about him. It's not sitting well. well hmm. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm just tired. Maybe, but I wouldn't discount that just out of hand. You're a very perceptive person, Ben. I, I trust your judgment, especially in matters where you're keeping your wits about you. And what you saw last night is what you saw. If right, you don't um, think you remember it correctly now, that's one thing. But what you saw last night, would you speak to it with confidence? Uh, I certainly feel like I saw something not quite right about that guy but can i'm, I'm tired it, it's been it's been a long bit of time the past couple of weeks we've been through a lot right. and yeah. you say i'm perceptive i'm not a people watcher i mean perceptive when i hear a squirrel through the trees i'm not a I'm not good at seeing details about people that's much more roshan's thing maybe keld's thing but well even still if there's someone with I suppose a, uh, I suppose there's, if, if there was somebody trying to keep folk out of a secretive meeting at. Oh, he was Strange. certainly, he was certainly there to keep people out of some sort of meeting. There were voices in there. They basically stopped when I walked through the door and mm. barely started to resume by the time I left. As soon as I entered, he was there to keep people out. I don't know who he was there to represent or in the employ of, but. Uh, there was certainly no merriment going on there. Interesting. Well, it's something for us to keep in our back pocket while we're uh, going about our business today and while we're at the party. Um, if you happen to see that fellow again, um, maybe if you could sort of just point him out quietly and um, one of us can have a look as well. Yeah, uh, of course. Um... We'll try to keep that in mind. We've got a lot of shopping to do today. I know we uh, do. I know we do. Quite a bit of last minute preparation. Mm -hmm. I tried to kind of scout out a path for us to follow. Follow was there last night, but everything was closed up and mm. lights were off. And uh, well, it was rather late once you actually departed. I was wondering whether or not you'd find anything open, but 
Oh, no, there's certainly not two things seem to close up. I wonder if they'll stay open late during the time of the party, but... Who knows, maybe, but either way, our shopping needs to be done beforehand, so... Where's Roshan? Is he coming with us? Uh, he's... No, Roshan's off at his desk reading at the moment. He's in the room with you guys, but he is reading. Yeah. Well, he said he was very nearly finished with that book, so if perhaps we can allow him to finish it up before the actual party, then we can all devote our attention and our energies in the same direction. And then I need to, uh, Roshan kind of pipes up. Yeah. Um, I have to spend time enchanting my outfit, so I'm going to be okay. a bit occupied. Of course. Do uh, you need anything out of the bag of holding? Otherwise, I think we should take it with us. Roll persuasion. No. Mm, um. Nah. <laughs> nah. Kiss my ring first. <laughs> oh, um, with that one level of exhaustion, too. Um, he's going to go through the bag and take out, if he needed anything, he's going to take it out. Um, mm -hmm. And is going to hand the bag over to drumroll, please. One, two, three, four. To Nana. Uh, hey! <laughs> that makes sense. That tracks. I think so. Um, <laughs> Nana is now in possession of the Bag of Holding. Woo! Thank you very much, Roshan. We'll take good care of it. Bring it back in just the same condition. Uh, he nods, and it looks like he started taking things out onto the table, like strange components. Mm -hmm. um, that looks like, ah. Uh, Weird, weird smart magic's mm. about to happen at some point. Weird smart magic. That's what Chant. that looks like right there. Enchantment. <laughs> uh, so uh, in that case, with some thanks for Roshan, um, I guess we'd better get a plan of attack going for where we're going, what we're hitting, what we need to shop for. It's currently morning, so you have mm -hmm. the whole uh, day that to do as you wish. I do also need to see whether or not I can get in contact with Tan. Um, at least yes. figure out whether or not she will deign to tell Good me idea. what sort of person I might be trying to fight uh, at this party, so I can. You maybe deserve prepare. at least something. It's worth asking. Worst she can say is no. So I need to pick up my armor and cloak, mm -hmm. and I'd like to get enchantments put on it. So we can pick that up, drop it off where they would put the enchantments on. Is there anybody else who needs to pick anything up from the armor, armory, whichever the name I can't recall? Holy armory. Eye right. on the prize? Yes. Eye on the prize? I think that's right. No. 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 <laughs> no, it's all wrong. Oh, it's one no. of them. <laughs> There's so many. Last places. look. It's last look. Last, last look is look. the armor place. Of course. I have to pick up my outfit and everything else, but it's all in that same shop. So I'm, after that, I'm good on shopping. Right. And I wanted to try something. I had an idea. We bought that. We paid way too much for that hair, hair hat. What was the? What hair, mask. Hair, hair mask. Hair mask. <laughs> uh, Mm -hmm. I was like, the what? <laughs> it, it, it's, a, it's supposed to be a treatment hair, for hair. the hair. It's, it's supposed to sort of spiff it up, make it look nice. It's meant to be a multi-treatment thing, but I will need to get some on your hair, at least today, if you're going to see any benefit come tomorrow. So I wanted to... I wonder if this will work, and it's worth a try as far as I'm concerned. It's just a, a fancy little thing. Let's, let's stop by... Um, up by Calendula's. Uh, Are you sure? I, I don't Should think we... I'll be going there. I'll stop by there myself. No okay. one saw us. Well, no one saw us, but it, it may... That's not true. I think Tag saw us. Oh, Tag's who I think is my handler. Right. You had yeah. mentioned that there was the guy that Russ yeah. sort of aggressed <laughs> upon. Mm-hmm. Aha. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay, okay. And he was aware... Yeah, I think he was there. Okay. <laughs> well, in that case, it, then I'm I'm supportive, but I, I'd like for you to be cautious 
I certainly wouldn't advise you to go as yourself. Um, no. Um... If you do go, I don't think any of us should be seen near there. Just for posterity, just to be safe. All right. Well, I guess we could we could come up with a someone else to be. Uh, I don't think I should be the person I normally am. Um, perhaps not. I can I can help you workshop something while we're uh, out taking care of our other uh, shopping necessities. All right, that's fine. Um, we're losing daylight, so let's yeah. head on there. Anything, what else do we need to accomplish? I have a lot of stuff I need to hear. Okay. Right. But anything, do you need to stay? Or... Anything we can help with while you do that? I, I don't think there's going to be any important meetings this early in the morning. So scrying right now sounds like a bad idea. Hmm. Probably not. I don't think most people usually hold clandestine meetings before, like, at least 11. Yeah. And then this afternoon, evening, I'd like to try again for uh, Song and Siren because I was not able to see Corrine and I do need to talk to her. She's yeah. the one with the invitation. Right. But if I can't find Tan especially throughout the day, then I'll definitely go along with you later, but... I'll go with you later on. All right. Thank you. Hmm. Uh, ready? Ready for anything while we're out? Um, gives a thumbs up from around the book. Uh -huh. <laughs> I believe he's got everything he needs. All right, we should bring him back a muffin or something. Yeah, pastry at the very least. That's what I was thinking. You'd like a, a yeah. reading snack, I yeah? I can go scout out some brain food. We can get Narf. something from that food court and beyond, beyond, beyond. They had a lot of food Ooh. there. <laughs> beyond, beyond, beyond. I've heard mm -hmm. of them. They've got everything. As you all make your way out, <laughs> um, as you make your way to the stairs, uh, you are, like, passed by, like, a messenger. Like, it looks like a person who has just, like, a little messenger bag and is, like, hopping up the stairs and oh. looks at each of you and then like, gives you a nod and then goes past you and knocks on your door. <laughs> Just oh. fully walks past you. No. Oh. That's us. Oh. <laughs> that one's our room. Uh, sorry about that. Um, could, could... Is there a specific person you're leaving a message for? Um, uh, the young woman sort of uh, kind of like looks over at you and then um, pulls out like a note and like uncrumples it really fast and like squints at it. Or any of you, Roshan? Ah. Mm. That would be uh, the gentleman who has remained in the room. Uh, and she knocks on the door again. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. And uh, <laughs> turns. Uh, the door is opened, and uh, she kind of leans in. Uh, I have a letter for Roshan, and um, a letter is given to Roshan, and the messenger makes their way out as quickly as they came. can hear the jaw gently locking. <laughs> mm -hmm. The need to be um, nosy. I'm going to uh, go. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll ask him later. Say, we'll, ask, yeah. we'll ask them later. We will ask them later. Let's Don't go. worry. We're going to have a Roshan montage at the beginning of next episode. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah! Uh, we read the note. Uh, <laughs> where I read a note and then I go about my business. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so all of you make your way to Merriment Square. What is the first stop? Where are we going? So will we pass like a outdoors kind of shop? You are welcome to go to one. It is. It wouldn't be right. too hard to to get to one. Mm -hmm. All right. I just want to pop in here for a second. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm sorry. This is very embarrassing for me to ask. Do you have any antlers? Uh, you can when you go inside. It's a it's a bit of a cluttered shop, but everything it's almost like everything. A lot of things are in big barrels. Like this is where all this is. That's where all that is. Uh, it is an older man in a wheelchair who um, has some solid looking arms. Uh, kind of wheels himself forward. Huh. Antlers. 
I'm fully kind accustomed looks you to over. Norm normally killing my own deer, but I was a bit unprepared. Mm. Give me an hour. All right. Um, we'll come back in an hour. Uh, <laughs> uh, he nods and then turns his chair towards the back of the shop. Boy, go see Darius, and um, just yells to the back. Uh, and you can see uh, a young man uh, kind of like pop his head out. Okay, what, what am I to do it? And he begins to uh, get the info about getting, seeing if um, somebody in town has antlers. So it looks mm. like we're 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 gonna go buy some antlers to sell you antlers. Uh, mm. But mm. they'll be here. <laughs> they will be here, and you don't have to go elsewhere to look. It's true. You don't got to go looking. Um, and it seems like you'll have, um, antlers in a couple hours. Hmm. Excellent. Hmm. Where to? Uh, while we're going along, Nana's kind of like keeping an eye out for, uh, Tan's surname is again, uh, Rye's daughter? Rye's yeah. daughter, I think it was. Um, if there's a shop that looks like it's like named for their family, uh, she'd like to at least kind of get a look at what type of business it is. Um, sure. She didn't really get much indication as to the nature of the family. No. Um, go ahead and roll a perception check. Okay. Oh, hell yeah, baby. You're doing me proud lately. Okay. Uh, 16 on the dice plus 622. You are very content in the fact that nothing stands out with the name Rye or Tan. Mm. There is no, like, Rye and son and son and daughter. There's, um, nothing stands out to even be, like, in that category. Yeah, so, okay. nothing catches you. You even pass by the candy shop and are like, nope. You were my last hope, candy shop. <laughs> no <laughs> Unless you're not named after sight. the family. Hmm? No rye bread in sight. <laughs> the rise rye bread. Um, uh, rye you look for bread. it, mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. sadly, no cigar on that one. Dang. Oh well, it's all right. What else we got? We're picking up armor and outfits. Yes. Okay. So that me. Blah blah blah. That's that one. Okay, so are you going to get your dress first or are you going to get your armor first? You guys are in separate places. Just curious. We can get fun stuff yeah. first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, get that on you it. make your way over to last look, and as almost every um every place that either provides some sort of service for this party the hustle and bustle in this place and it's not even by like a lot of customers it looks like a all hands on deck scenario this is the day before the party and mm -hmm. people are scrambling and you can see people like carrying sets of armor and some are like moving swords around and it looks like people are scrambling to get shit done uh there is a a frazzled young woman um who looks a lot like the um, the man you spoke to earlier, Brassus, uh, but her braids are long and have uh, the little beads at the bottom. And she kind of looks up to you and just that same sort of stoic face. Uh, here to pick something up? Uh, yes, uh, order for Ben Varmascaria. Um, there's some studded leather armor and a cloak. Yeah, one second. Um, and uh, sort of like everybody in these huge ledgers that they have. Um, and uh, as and just to remind everybody, this is also a place where you can get enchantments done. That is a service Brassus uh, provides. Uh, but uh, she's like, OK, one second. And she gets up and goes and uh, presents the armor and cape on the table in front of her. And you do enchantments here, is that correct? Yes. I had some ideas for some cosmetic things. Um, I was wondering if you could tell me how much they would cost. 
and Fen will pull out some little scraps of paper that he's made little sketches on and, and show her, like, this is what I had in mind, and... Um, the rest of you can see this woman is staring so far into the void past Fen. Oh, no. S sir, you're, you're aware that the, the party is tomorrow. That I it takes hours that. to do an enchantment. I understand. Um, wish this would have worked out better. Uh-huh. Um... Sir, I don't even, and she begins to go through uh, the books, mm. the amount of gold and like, you can see like there is um, a bit of like, 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 like uh, on the face, just of uh, someone trying not to spiral um, begins <laughs> looking through the books. For it to be, I mean, we're going to start for such a rush job, um, uh, Mr. Fenn, I think it's going to be at least a thousand gold, at least more, depending. I can't even promise we could finish it for the first day of the party. And you can see Brassus walking in the back and he stops. Uh-oh. And he turns and he comes to the front desk oh. and kind of like leans in. What's the name on that one? Uh, Muscaria, Fenn Var Muscaria. Um, he squeezes the girl's shoulder. That'll be no problem. What are you looking for? Uh, go get the, the, the box from the back, um, he says to the young girl. And she gets up kind of confused and then goes to the back to go get something. I'm, I'm confused. I appreciate your, your help with this matter, but what is the cause for it? Uh, well, we have a list of VIPs, and you happen to be one. And um, the girl comes back with a like a very flat, thin box and sets it on the counter and opens it. And it is a large sum of immaculate pearls sitting side by side, each of them like in their own little divot in a piece oh. of fabric, line after line after line of pearls. Oh, for grief. And um, uh, Brassus looks to you. How do you want these applied to your outfit? No charge. Uh, we've got you covered. Okay. Um, you could use that to incorporate some of these designs here. Yeah. Um, and Fen will just go through the, mm -hmm. the what he has in mind uh, with the pearls. And mm -hmm. uh, I certainly appreciate it. I'm sorry to come in so late. I, we would just waylaid by quite a bit of responsibility in the past few days. Uh, I understand. Consider it done. Um, give us uh, as much time as you can, but it'll be done before the party. Thank you. Um, I will, I'll stop in uh, later to check on your progress and and, uh, and be by to pick it up if you're done. If not, then I'll pick it up tomorrow morning. Of course. Um, and he closes uh, the box that contains the pearls and hands it back to the girl. All right. Thank Shouldn't be an issue. Of course. Have a good day. Um, Max Moosebrain, I'm trying to remember if <laughs> Nana picked up her armor. I you got your did. shit. I did yeah. get my shit. Good. Okay, good. And even if I'm you fine. didn't, you have it now. It is. Hooray! <laughs> uh... It is not. I found it for you. <laughs> if it was Welcome. not got, it is got now. Hello. Yes. Well, all right then. In that case, onwards to outfits. For love and lace. Um, you're heading over to for love and lace. For um, love and lace. I can get my outfit. Uh, Nix, you are presented with um, a very tall, like this person is like, has their arm fully extended upwards <laughs> to hold your outfit. <laughs> And it is covered in something to keep it safe from the elements. So it is uh, fully obscured and um, hands it over to you, including um, a bunch of like wallet sized ones that are handed to you in the same Thanks. manner. Uh huh. And we've got all the jewelry. Just checking. All the jewelry's there. We got the mask. Okay, I think we're good. Good. Excellent. Great. 
I don't think I can walk around much more with this. <laughs> Just holding her arm up. Her arm's so fully extended. Do... Yeah, we can, we can probably if, give that a... Hmm, I'd hate to fold it. I'm not putting it. that in the bag. Got it! Then perhaps we... Nana slowly begins to open it and then no. slowly closes yeah. it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. All right, then. Back to the inn, I suppose, if we're going to safeguard it. Um, unless we want to stop anywhere else first. Unless you two want to break off to go to the other inn, since you both had something there. Well, might be worth at least checking in, seeing whether or not I can uh, get a hold of Tan. Well, if it's been an hour, we will swing by and pick up those antlers and drop them off. Um, I, somebody that can do some leather work, hopefully. That would be Brassus. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, Brassus cool. is going to be a busy man today. Throw it on my tab. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. You put some pearls <laughs> on them. <laughs> Maybe. A little dangly pearl. Mm -hmm. um, it is easy enough to uh, go inquire and go get your antlers. Um, and I want, what do I want for some antlers? I want, I want. And these are these are deer antlers. We're going. That's what I was hoping for. Yeah. Cool. Little jackalope antlers. Like is <laughs> this like the, the jackalope? Is sure giant moose. <laughs> oh, oh god. Moose. Behold um, the majestic moose. Um. Uh, for uh, you were presented with these antlers that are in very beautiful condition, well maintained, uh, and uh, the ask is for 15 gold. Easy That's enough. I will, uh, yeah, I'll, I will give 20 gold for the late mm -hmm. rush. Mm -hmm. uh, he nods, and you're going to go bring these over to, uh, to Brassus? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, you go back over and, can ex and you can explain to him through your little drawings, and uh, he can get on the case. <laughs> yeah. Um, are you guys splitting or who, who's going back to the inn, if anybody, or who is going to the, the hotel, the hotel, you know, the fancy one, <laughs> the, the, fancy. the inn and the hotel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's Next more of a, back, back, so. <laughs> yeah. Where are you going, Kel? Kelda's probably going to walk. Mm. Yeah, Kelda's like, I'm here for down. vibes. <laughs> Welcome to tag along with us, or if you want to go about your own business, you may. Just go about your own business. All right, all right. Which is no business. <laughs> None <laughs> whatsoever. Uh, I, I just suggest let's all meet back at the inn. Um, uh, I know Corinne's going to be playing in the afternoon. What time is it now? Uh, we're approaching afternoon. Approaching uh, afternoon. Solid noon. We're approaching noon. Noonish. Noon. All right. Um, probably we'll be over there. It's hot. Uh, we're probably going to be over there like at least an hour or two if we're watching Corinne. Let's just make sure we're back at uh, the hard fiddle. Oh, I don't know, three o'clock or so, and we can convene and see if there's anything else needs doing before the evening. It's fine by me. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And everyone scatters. Uh, yes. Um, Kelder, are you doing anything in particular, or is it just a fun, fun day about town? It's gonna be a fun day about town, hopefully. Okay. <laughs> Thing in particular in mind. Think he's crossed. <laughs> just bye. Um, uh, you uh, sort of make your way. Watching. Yeah, mm. you make your way around town. You get a snack. You sit at some fountains. Um, uh, go ahead and roll an intelligence check for me real quick, just to see if something stands out to you um, or not as you uh, take in the town around you. And some pastries for Roshan. Thank you. Hot diggity Ooh. dog, bud. Good job. Did you roll a nat 20? Rolled in there. Oh, uh, oh, nice. Yeah. Um, Nice. As you make your way around, you notice that um, there's kind of like a side note that you take in. 
Um, most of the fountains don't seem to um, have hot water flowing into them, as if they're all from like different varied sources depending on where they are. Um, not all of them look like the two fish fountain you went to. And you see that some of them are covered in snow, and some of them aren't even in operation because of um, being frozen in places where they're like, don't even, don't even try this one. And it's just mm -hmm. a side note to you that um, Gunhild picked two fish fountain because there was no snow on it. There was no snow around it. There was no way to leave footprints. Ah. And you remember that sensation of the hairs standing up on the back of your neck and how close she could have been to you during that encounter. Just something you take note of as you sit and eat a croissant, um, <laughs> which is now the group pastime of being interesting. alone. <laughs> as you leave me alone with my croissant. <laughs> I'm going to go better make and me you drop it. You go over to a fountain that has snow on it and you vibe. Uh, I'll be over here. Uh, but that's just something that crosses your mind. Like, hmm, well, fuck me. <laughs> and you're like, well, I lived. <laughs> I lived, lived this time. Tale. <laughs> lived to tell the tale. Nana and Fen, after um, uh, astronomically increasing Brassus's workload, you all go over to the <laughs> Song and Siren. Uh, <laughs> We really ought to get them some kind of nice gift basket or something. It's, I, I don't know. Another basket? I've barely But you don't have to one. make this one. You, don't, you haven't got to make this one. We'll just figure out like an arrangement of things that maybe they'll appreciate. You arrive at the crazy. Song and Siren, and um, it seems to be business as usual. Through the front window, you can see the, the gnomish man... Uh, working away at some pages in a book, and you can see a woman with a precise bob standing at the front. Mm -hmm. Is this the same one who was here last night, or is this another woman with a precise bob? Ah, uh, you guys don't know. Uh, oh, well. It's a blur of women with bobs at this point. Uh, two for lunch, please. Um, she motions... Uh, to the um, open entryway and uh, smiles as you can hear the sound of people uh, talking and the clink of silverware. Uh, it seems that the the bar portion is open. Cool. Excellent. Excellent. Um, I, I suppose just real quick before we go in for lunch, um, I know that uh, Nana inquired about leaving a note for Tan previously. She was in and around. Um, I don't suppose uh, Tan Rai's daughter is in or around the establishment this morning, this afternoon? Um, I could check one moment and goes over to that uh, that flurry of pipes and yeah. um, writes a note. Who is this? Uh, Nonna Hemming's daughter. Mm. And this note is sent through the pipes upwards into the ceiling and... Uh, uh, after a moment. Do you need her presently? Um, not urgently, no. Uh, we'll be in the tavern over here taking our, uh, our lunch for at least a couple of hours. If we could meet her at her convenience um, this afternoon, that would be appreciated. All right. And the note goes up. Uh, and no response immediately comes. Yep, that's fine. Thank you very much. Um, Nana will uh, uh, tip a gold for the uh, for the bobbin. She's happy to take it. Um, the two of you are going to go uh, into the uh, the bar space. Um, you currently don't hear any music. It is technically not afternoon yet, but right. you are definitely getting into that territory. We're pre-gaming. Um, yeah, you guys are welcome to get food and drink. You definitely have uh, money for it. Um, if somebody will just like toss me a platinum, um, I will be I will be content. Uh, <laughs> just a platinum, please. Uh, yeah. But the two of you are able to set up in a nice little spot and um, eat some very nice food and drink some very nice drinks as you wait. Mm -hmm. um, 
time begins to slowly tick away as you enjoy your food. Uh, just the, the not a lot of people. It seems this isn't like the hottest afternoon joint. Uh, but there, there's a good amount of people here uh, going about their business either to get drinks. Um, if anyone's sloppy, they are hiding it uh, as best mm -hmm. they can. Uh, and there is the sound of heels on stone as Corrine enters into mm -hmm. the tavern space. Uh, yes. Beautiful red dress and almost wearing a shawl of pearls that split so that the arms can come through the center. And Fen, there is a moment where that anxiety just sort of like slips away. It's like, she's okay. I'm good. I'm going to figure everything out. Everything's great. And you look at her face and it is not plastered with that um, same smile, that that warm energy. She looks tired, just like you are, and mm -hmm. uh, a bit distressed for that split second as she walks into the space. And then oh, no. you watch as she kind of like tries to like pull in and compose herself mm -hmm. and uh, meets your eye across the room. Huh. Do you want to have a moment alone with her? Or would you like? I, I don't want to stop her from doing her job. She's here to right. work. I, I, of I do need to speak to her though. Um, so just a moment, and and if you know, I'll I'll be back to you, and right. Ben will make his way over to Corinne, and uh, I'm I've missed you. That is so sweet. I've. I've missed you too, honestly. I <laughs> I would rather have been here having a good time talking to you and things have just, things have been getting just so complicated around town and uh, there is a quiver to the lip. Oh no. Is everything all right? And she just sort of, um, it is a heavy sort of sit, but like there's still like an elegance to the fall as she like sits down in in a booth and um, looks to you to sit next to her and not across from her. She um, mm. not makes space for you. And Fennel sit next to her. Uh, you give her a respectful distance, but uh, take his best cues as a socially incompetent woods person can mm -hmm. uh, yes Nana just kind of keeping a covert eye on the conversation just as a concerned friend the menu. trying to make sure that just <laughs> mm -hmm, everything okay I, she could tell that Fen seemed a little bit concerned for her and also anxious to talk with her so Nana's just trying to like keep a, a little bit of an eye on it without not Without being intrusive, still in the still in the same spot. She um, looks over to you, Finn, and you can see that her eyes have gotten a bit glassy, um, as if she, if she were to blink in this moment, that that tears would spring forth. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't want to just <laughs> unleash all my woes on you. You came here to talk and. And have a good time, and I'm... Everything else can wait. No, it's it's fine. I'm I'm here for you. I'm... That's why I'm going to the party with you. That's why I'm here. I'm here to see you. If there's something you need, if there's anything you need, if you, even if it's just to talk. I would... there, are safe, there are safer places we could do it, if you... If, well, if... Fen, you are so sweet. I would feel terrible asking for you to do anything for me at this time. You're probably so busy, and... Uh, it's... It's not a problem. I... It's what we're here to do, is to help people. Uh, she moves closer. Like, the respectful distance you left, 
Um, you left space for Odin, and she instantly uh, <laughs> turns that into nothing. Um, as she sits, uh, her leg sort of pressed against the side of your leg. I... Is she... And she seems to compose herself a bit. So I'm... I'm trying to help plan this party. I'm trying to get it off the ground, and we're so close. And, and now there's a there's a problem at the venue, and and we hired someone to deal with it, and they they quit, and there's some sort of pest problem, and and the <laughs> we can't get anyone to do anything about it. It's we're running out of time. We can't set up. I'm I'm just a bit at a loss um, of what to do. A pest problem? Let's solve a pest. I mean, we, I can set some traps. I can. Uh, uh, that's something I actually can help with. Um. Well, I have I haven't seen them myself, but uh, there's and she kind of plays nervously with the end of her hair. The person we sent in to deal with the problem, he. He had these little scratches all over his ankles and said there was just just so many of these little rats. And he's like, it's too many rats to deal with. And I, he said he dealt with rats and I felt bad that I sent him in there to deal with his problem. And I, I don't, I'm not sure why there's so many rats. It's not like there's like bags of grain sitting on the ground there. And I'm sorry, I'm rambling. It's fine. I'm I'm happy to listen, whatever it has you have to say, and happy to help with whatever I can. Rats are uh, uh, not a problem. Uh, with um, if I don't want to send you in there by yourself, based on what what happened to that poor man's calves. Um, but um i could i could pay you and your friends and you could meet me at the venue and um all of you could assist just to make sure everyone's safe and that you don't get hurt i i don't require any payment um i i uh, this is something we could take care of it's not a problem all right um i was going to cancel my 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 appointment for today, but I wanted to at least leave a letter for you, so I'm glad you were here. Let's get this problem taken care of, and we can talk about what time you'd like to meet tomorrow or anything else that needs done, and uh, let me know what you need. Of course. Um, uh, I have a couple things that I need to just take care of here. I don't plan to perform. I'm so sorry. Uh, but fine. Um, let me give you uh, some directions to where we can meet and uh, uh, as many of your friends as you want to bring. Uh, uh, they'll get free party favors or something. I'll do. I'll figure out something to to um, to award them um, all of you for your kindness. Um, but if you could um, meet me at this address in a in a couple hours i would be i would be very um i'd be appreciative no problem at all and uh she smiles at you uh red lipstick um uh uh must be very good mascara and eyeliner as none of it <laughs> runs um and uh, she looks to you and leans in a little hesitant and gives you a kiss on the cheek. Finn's uh, stripes is brindling, blushes a little bit. Uh, and he'll stand and extend his hand to help her out of the booth because that's always awkward when you're tucked oh, behind the table. Sorry, let me, let me, let <laughs> me. <laughs> 
Right. And she takes your hand and uh, gets up from the table and she kind of reaches forward and like smooths out the sleeves at your shoulders and just kind of looks at you and smiles. Thank you, Fen. This means a lot to me. Not a problem at all. We'll, I'll get some friends and we'll, we'll meet you at that address in a couple of hours. Thank you. Um, let me go deal with my affairs then. Uh, and kind of wipes at her eyes and uh, goes over to the bar and talks to the dwarven man there for a moment who like gives one of those like very like Oh, please, like I like fully understanding nod, like, oh, don't even ask. Uh, and um, she gives like a very like like a thank you sort of bow. Uh, no kisses on the cheek for this gentleman. And um, she looks back over at Fen before she leaves and smiles. And then makes her way out of the song and siren. And that is where we are going to stop for tonight. Uh, thank you all for being here. We really appreciate it. We love telling you guys a story. If you head over to youtube.com slash the dice cult, you can watch all past episodes of On the Backs of Gods, One Shots, other D&D games, Vampire the Masquerade, whatever suits your fancy. If you'd like to keep up with us, we are at Backs of Gods on Instagram. And, or not at that. At Backs of Gods. Yeah, that's right. No, hey, guys. Hey. <laughs> I've done this 146 times, and yet here we are. Uh, at Backs of Gods on Instagram and Twitter. If you'd like to keep up with all of us, we are at The Dice Cult on Instagram and Twitter. I'm sure Katie is putting up the link for her lovely, beautiful dice that we all roll and um, can thoroughly fit thank for Russ eating shit. Um, <laughs> yes! If, <laughs> yeah. uh, we love so if you want it. the drama, by golly, mm. get some beautiful dice. That makes dice. it even better. You rolled really really his dice for that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, that's beautiful. Uh, but thank you again. We appreciate it. We love telling you guys a story. We will be here same time, same place, Mondays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we'll see you guys next time. Good night, everybody. Bye. Thanks for joining us, cultists.